Hey, what's going on you guys? My name is Carson Rouse and welcome back to Business Buzz where we focus on business, entrepreneurship, and investing. Today, I'm gonna be talking about a topic that people love talking about all throughout America. It's a heated topic. Should schools teach personal finance classes? The United States of America holds the record for the world's largest economy, and a lot of this can most likely be attributed to the fact that we have insane levels of mass consumerism in this country. Everybody and their brother wants to buy the newest gadget, the newest thing, and everything just to keep up with the Joneses and look cool. But you know, maybe if Americans were a little more financially literate, there would be less of this insane amount of discretionary spending, but then there would in case be a crippled economy. and maybe. This is the reason that schools don't teach us financial literacy. This may sound like conspiracy, but I find it very logical. And like I've said in previous videos, it's insane that around 70% of Americans save less than 10% of their income, and one in every five Americans do not save a single dime. Thank goodness for social security. It really is crazy that high schoolers now leave high school at 18 years old, fresh off to see the world without knowing the bare basics of finance, how taxes work, how to pay your taxes, and they've never even learned how compound interest can apply to your money and investing. These are things that everybody should know in my opinion, and they're just not being taught. I'm a firm believer that the lack of personal finance education in high schools today is one of the biggest tragedies in the American education system. And in today's video, I'm going to be going over my three reasons for backing this claim. Before I get into the video, please smash the like button for these six states because they are the only states in America that require a financial education course in high school. So please smack the like button for these six states. Number one, poor consequences. First, I wanna talk about college. I've always thought that it is an absolutely insane idea to expect your average 18-year-old kid fresh out of high school to make one of the largest financial decisions of their life that could put them tens of thousands of dollars in debt before learning a single thing about finance in school. Yet, college is something that teachers, high school counselors, and parents heavily pressure kids into, despite the fact that a third of all college students drop out, and about 57% of college students don't complete college after six years of being in school and end up in tens of thousands of dollars in student loan debt. Just one year of college can put somebody in debt between ten dollars to $15,000, and I truly believe that most high school students don't really understand the scale of this. They just do that because it's sort of the default way nowadays. Now again, I am not bashing college here. I do believe that it is the financially best decision for many people, especially if you have a certain career in mind. I'm just saying that there should be more of a focus on an education in school of the consequences of major or even minor financial decisions that you make in your life. Considering that the average American has over $6,000 in credit card debt, this would be beneficial to any student's life. The fact is, is that the lack of financial literacy leads to financial problems, and financial problems lead to poor health, depression, and an overall lower happiness level. These are proven things that science and statistics have found. Number two, replace expendable classes. In my opinion, many of the classes that are required by law for middle school and high school students to take are far less necessary and important than a financial literacy class would be. For example, most states require that every student has at least two to three elective courses that they take every semester. And these elective courses uh, range in whatever they want to choose. I mean, it gives the, the students some options. But let's be real, most students just choose the easiest courses to get by and get that easy A and just have fun. Some of these elective classes include art, music, typing, business, all sorts of choices, foreign language, and I do agree that elective classes can be great. These classes all are very valuable, and I think that a student should have some choice. All I'm saying here is maybe take out one of those elective classes and replace it with a required financial literacy course. I think that would be way more important. Now, a lot of you may be thinking, well, why not just have financial literacy as another elective class? Light bulb. Well, here's the problem with that. It's that most high school students don't look at a class called financial literacy or financial education and say, oh, wow, that sounds like a barrel of fun. Let me bring all my friends and let's learn about basic financial concepts. It just doesn't happen. And the few who will see the value in it will be way ahead of their classmates in life. 
Number three, no more pensions. Back in the day, employee pension plans were very popular. It was a form of retirement plan that was contributed to by your employer. If you worked at the company for long enough, you would be receiving money after you retire by the company that you worked for. It's basically a salary after you retire. It's usually a portion of what your salary was after you retire. This is great for those that weren't financially educated because they didn't have to take control of saving and investing a certain amount of their money. Their employer basically took care of all of that for them. But nowadays, pensions are going away and are being replaced by defined contribution retirement plans. And it puts all the weight off of the employer and onto the employee. So the employee has to take on the responsibility of saving the correct amount of money and investing at their own will. Many young people who weren't taught financial literacy will put off saving for retirement and contributing to these plans for too long before it's too late and they don't have enough money to support themselves for retirement and it makes them have to work way longer. Who wants to work until they're 80 years old? So I think that learning about retirement planning is essential, not just at a young age, but especially at a young age. So I hope you schools out there have listened up and are considering what I've just said. So if you're a person who feels robbed of a personal finance education, be sure to check out Business Buzz, this YouTube channel, and try to catch up on the years of being left out and just learn a little bit about investing and personal finance. I think you'll love it here, so be sure to subscribe. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. P.S. guys, if you want to get started learning about finance, I would check out this video right here, learning about compound interest. The day I learned about compound interest is the day that finance became my passion. Also, show this to your teachers, and I'll see you guys next.